It's been a tough week for tech, especially in the chip space. And the latest contender today, Supermicrocomputer, the server company, under pressure. It's sliding because it didn't pre-announce results. It usually does, or at least the market expects it to. And this all coming after the broader semiconductor sector fell into correction this week on shifting expectations for rate cuts and disappointing results from ASML and TSMC. Now, joining us now is Bernstein Senior Analyst Stacey Raskin, hopefully to put all of this in perspective for us. Stacey, it's great to see you. As always, there is nearly no one I would rather speak to uh, on semiconductors than you. Um, so we got NVIDIA down 9% today. Yeah. What the heck is going on? I, I think with NVIDIA, it's probably just super micro dragging, like it's dragging the whole semi space down and like the AI names are getting hit worse. I, I don't, I, like they didn't say anything. Like they don't report earnings for another month, frankly. Um, I don't think it's more than that. But I, I mean, if you look at the industry as a whole, you're, you're right, things are starting to move more into a correction phase. We had reports from from players like ASML and, and, and TSMC. Um, you have to remember, Outside of AI, AI is very strong right now. The, the rest of the semi industry this year is, is not all that great, right? PCs and smartphones, like they've probably hit bottom. I don't think they're getting any worse, but like they're not necessarily getting a ton better right now. Um, data center spending outside of AI is actually quite weak. Server CPUs and networking and that sort of thing is quite weak. Industrial end markets have been very weak. Automotive, T TSMC called this out. Automotive is now starting to roll over um, uh, potentially. And so, I think just broadly for the industry, especially given how strong it was last year, it was very strong year to date until recently. Valuations in the sector have been very high as the stocks have held up very well amid uh, estimate cuts. I mean, I'm, I guess part of me is not incredibly surprised that things are taking a little bit of a breather as we get ready for earnings, which kicks off like in, in you know, in, in, a, in a big way next week. So, Stacey, talk to me about the timeline then for this breather. Where are we at? Are we at the beginning of this cycle? Are we in inning one? Are we in inning seven? You know, it, it's funny. So a, a lot of these companies have actually been cutting numbers for a while. Like it's it's not new. So like, like I said, PCs and far, smartphones, I think we're through most of it. The question now is on like the pace of the recovery. But some of the analog like like games, like the industrial and the auto, and like some of these companies like Texas Instruments and, and some of their peers have already been cutting numbers for three, four, five quarters in a row. Like it's not like it's new. Um, the stocks, like I said, have held up very, very well amid estimate cuts. You, by the semiconductor investors in general like to buy estimate cuts if they believe that we're that the bottom is in. Um, usually, the stocks go down first, though. Like in many cases over the last six months, amid some fairly sizable negative revisions, the stocks just haven't gone down. They've held up very, very well. And so, I think in, in, if you're asking where are we in terms of like the numbers cuts, hopefully we're closer to a bottom to, to the end of it than the beginning because it's been going on for a while. For the stocks, though, like I said, the stocks have held in remarkably, much better than I think they ordinarily would in a typical cycle. And and like I said, maybe we're starting to see a little bit of a delayed reaction, but but some of it's happening. Uh, there'll be some bellwethers that report next week. Texas Instruments is kind of the first large diversified guy that reports. They're on Tuesday next week. Intel and my coverage reports on Thursday. We'll get a better view on, on PCs and servers and, and, and those kinds of broader markets as well. NVIDIA, though, of course, doesn't report for a while until later in May. And you still have a $1,000 price target on NVIDIA. NVIDIA has sort of successfully portrayed itself as now separate from the semi-cycle the, the, in the different areas that you were discussing. Yeah. Is it still, is that right? Is that the right way still well, to think about it? I mean, yes and no. Yes, in the sense that you know, 80% of the revenue is data center like slash AI. And, and look, I, I know like it, it's it's not pretty out there today, but so far most of the signs are suggesting that AI spending is is still very strong, right? I, I mean, again, I guess people are getting nervous from some of these. They they wanted to see a positive pre for some of these names, right? But I mean, in general, the spending is strong. Even guys like TSMC like talked about um, AI spending like holding up. I think they even extended their view for how long, they, how far out they they thought it would grow. So that that market seems well. And like I said, data centers for for Nvidia's. 75 or 80 percent of their total revenues right now so they are like sort of like uniquely concentrated uh in that market the stock even is not even that expensive i mean if if, if the the current numbers are anywhere close you know it's low 30s like like multiple like on 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 sort of like a a, a calendar 25 like kind of earnings number like it's not even that expensive it's way cheaper than it was actually before the run I, i've actually made this point maybe with you guys before mm -hmm. You know, um, as the stock is, has 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 gone up a ton. By the the stock is still up something like fifty or sixty percent year to date, even after today. Like it's still up a ton. 
Um, the estimates have gone up like far or, or far more than the stock has even gone up, and the multiple has actually come down a lot. It's actually very, very inexpensive. Um, if if the numbers are any close to being correct, now that that's clearly the fear, right? I mean, you know, people are, are nervous for for a stock like Nvidia that just the numbers have gone up so much, so quickly that that sustainability is 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 a question, and 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 I get it. And like you know, we we you sort of see this stuff sometimes with these. I'm not terribly worried about it this year. I'm not even really worried about it next year. You know, 2026, I guess we'll see. I'm also very bullish the long term on the opportunity again for them. I, I still think in five years or ten years. We'll be talking about numbers that are materially higher than what we're talking about today. Like, what does it look like in two years? I, I'm not sure. I don't think anybody knows. Mm -hmm. But at least for now, I, I I think the trajectory for them should hold up. I think so. On a day like today, where are the retail investors that want to get in on NVIDIA when, like you say, it is at a discount? I, I don't know where the real retail investors are. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't spend too much time or any time talking to the retail investors. I guess they're, I mean, they're like, not my constituents. <laughs> why is, is this, I, I guess a better way of asking you this is like, is this dip? a buying opportunity for folks and i mean i just can't get over that it's down nine percent we're not seeing I, I looked, it looked, like you said I, I think your your prior guest today they, it's a very liquid it's a very large mar large market cap very liquid stock um you know it, like i said i'm not necessarily surprised to see taking a bit of a breather it's not the, it's not even there, there are other things that are down more than it today it's still up a ton year to date it's still up a ton year over year if you believe in that long-term opportunity, like these are the moments, yeah, when when you would when you would want to buy it. It's always sort of funny, you know. Everybody sort of looks like historically, like you had the opportunity eighteen months ago to buy the stock at I don't know what it was, one hundred and fifty dollars or whatever. And like when those sorts of things happen, like nobody ever wants to buy it. Hmm. <laughs> so uh, yeah, like I said, at, at this point at least we haven't seen any changes. I think in the fundamentals for the, for that stock, I don't think so. Well, and Stacy, of course, it's not just a, a semiconductor universe of one stock, right? I mean, you mentioned Intel and AMD. You've got market performance on those guys, though, going into next week. I do notice you've got buy equivalent or outperform ratings on Qualcomm, on NVIDIA, of course, on Broadcom, and on applied materials, which I think is interesting, especially given what we heard from ASML. Um, so, you know, everything's selling off. Do you think these we're going to get good numbers from this collection of semiconductor companies? I, I, I think so. So look, um, so we've talked about Nvidia. I, I actually really like Broadcom. And like, by the way, for AI, actual like meaningful AI revenues, there's only two companies that are seeing actual meaningful dollars right now. It's Nvidia and Broadcom. Like that, that that's it. Broadcom makes um, some of the custom chips uh, that the hyperscalers use, and then they also have a pretty big networking play. Uh, Broadcom as well, like their, their Broadcom's core business is not great right now. Again, they're exposed to like data center networking and, 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 and that sort of thing. It's down a lot, but the AI revenues are enough to bridge the gap. So the overall numbers are holding up. Um, I suspect that AI trajectory for them continues to tick up as we go through the year. Um, I think the next year for the core business, given how weak it is this year, you set up better next year. And they just closed on their VMware deal. And I guess as you see upside there and the stock's still pretty cheap. So I really like Broadcom. For Qualcomm, like smartphones, like I said, they're they're pretty weak. Like they're right. not like necessarily getting better a lot, but they bottomed. That's good. And there's an AI story for Qualcomm as well at the edge. And we've done some work on this recently. And you know, people are going to buy AI smartphones at a minimum. That's that's what will be for sale. I think at a minimum, there's a content story for Qualcomm that can help play things out. Um, and and that that's an opportunity. There's also an opportunity for if people can get excited about AI for them. There's an opportunity for multiple expansions. So I like Qualcomm. Uh, for applied materials, I don't think you can read too much um, from the ASML print to most of the other semi gaps. ASML is kind of unique. At a minimum, it does look like the China stronger for longer story in semi cap is still continuing. And you listen to some of the other TSMC and, and some of the others at least talking about their forward like like process roadmaps. It doesn't look like there's been any changes. Now they're planning to roll out like advanced process technologies, which which should be a benefit for for, a, for AMAT and some of the other semi caps as well. So we like AMAT as well. All right, lots to chew on going into all these numbers. Stacy, thank you so much. Good to see you and have a great weekend. My pleasure.